television has to move pretty quick. I don't know why we call it television. It's, we're shooting a movie here, it's hour long, and we want that quality. But we also are limited in the amount of time. There's a lot of use of available light, which is beautiful. And I'm very happy with the way it looks. I mean, it's beautiful to look at. The scale of what we're doing is so vast. A whole section of the story takes place in Africa. But at the same time, in America, the Dutton family are facing enormous problems and difficulties. They've been hit by a very heavy drought. There's not enough grass. And everyone is scrambling to find food for their herds. And, and because this is your life, this is your livelihood. And there's a conflict that, that uh, arises between shepherds and uh, a cattleman. And that's where the, it just spirals. The man doesn't own the grass. The mountains own the grass. God owns the grass. And you're no God, Jacob Dutton. You're no God. We're working in Butte, Montana, which was one of the biggest cities in the country in 1923. And uh, there are enough buildings from that period of time, and we're able to really use a surprising amount of the city of Butte as though it were 1923. But it takes a lot of work. We're able to, like, pick a street and then, you know, put our full attention on it. I see it as a bringing of history to life. I don't know where the hell we got 100 uh, cars from 1923. Walking down that street and seeing it dressed with the period cars mixed in with the horses, that is also a story point that Taylor has woven into this script. They weren't sure they were going to be the thing, you know, that were going to replace the horses. We had boxing matches, which was a real thing. Historically, there was a real boxing match during that time. We have women there, I guess, endorsing the prohibition and everybody dressed to the nines. It was just mesmerizing, it was magic. I hope it translates to the audience the magic that we felt just walking on set. There's so much authenticity around here. And of course, somebody started mining here and it became, I think, the largest copper mining um, area in the world. The role that Montana played as far as uh, the copper, where we're actually shooting in Butte, that was what helped us win World War I and they're very, aware of that up there. Uh, we gotta fall back or ride! Camera, my leg's broken! You gotta ride! Flashback scenes were very intense. It's definitely the closest I'll ever come to being in war myself. And also, I've been blown away every single department on this. It's just the level of detail and consideration and specificity. Every single background actor is so specifically designed. Every prop. The, all those little details that add up add to that authenticity and that richness on screen, for sure. As an actor, it's you feel it. Finding German uniforms was a challenge. Calling the various prop houses in America, Los Angeles, and New York, and they only had a certain number. We ended up sourcing a lot out of Poland. Spencer is on a Browning M1917 machine gun. Phenomenal piece of history. Um, we had an actual M1917. The feeling of it as you pull that trigger, and, you know, and it just shakes you. And that comes through on camera. We had six cameras that day, and just watching how we set up the scenes, the smoke, the special effects with squibs going off and explosions, you felt like you are in the war. The weather was perfect, foggy and cold. We got blessed by the filmmaking gods that day. We do pretty much bare bones, hit the ground stunts. And when you have an actor like Brandon, it makes it really easy because he wants to be in it and wants to do it. And he's really good with the fights and the stunt guys. And it turned out really great. He gave a really good performance in it. Slamming a helmet down on someone's throat, tapping into that energy is not something anyone should ever have to do. In such a heightened state of fear and survival for such an extended amount of time, and the effect that that has on someone's psyche and their nervous system just has a lot of trauma that he's not dealing with. He hides it in booze and essentially trying to kill himself. He just can't die. Show me your hands, John. You must beat this like a mule to get a simple answer. The remainder of the class has already answered. I remember when I was getting fitted, I couldn't look at myself. I took one glance and I just started bawling. It's, it's just intense, you know, it's, it's not a made up story. It's the truth, and accountability needs to be had. When you meet Tiona, she's 16 now, so she's been there since she was about 10, 11. And at this point, she's at her wit's end. We have the benefit of having Mose Brings Plenty. He is our advisor. 
and experienced some of that. And we just wanted to make sure we did it right and told the story properly. It's definitely gonna make people think and wonder even more so. The Native American school, the government school, the actual location is in Pony, Montana, and it's a rural two-story school. The detail that was still there, because it has been around since the 20s or before, it was the perfect location for our story. There's um, a latigo, a writing crop. From a prop, special effects, stunt standpoint, you can't hit somebody with that. We made soft versions of it. We even took some and we cut them in half so we could VFX the front element onto it. It's not one story, it's a collective story. It happened to all of the women in my family. So that trauma still lives within you and you have to face it and you have to talk about it because not talking about it is keeping it under the rug. And that is not how we operate. <laughs> it's not how we operate as indigenous peoples, as human beings in general, as spirit. We go through a lot of trouble to go places which are rarely seen and do things in them which are hard to do in those places. We'll find ourselves 50 miles from here and halfway up some mountain with 1,200 uh, sheep and 600 cattle. And uh, I'm uh, always amazed at the logistical challenges that we're facing in order to make this as real as possible. Oh, by God, we were putting a lot of cattle on this land. We showed up that day and it was supposed to be a steep hill and they found a real steep, steep hill. I had to ask for a couple tips because I'm supposed to rip up past everybody. I was like, can a horse even get up this mountain? I don't think I could walk up this mountain, but we did it. Moving cattle, it's kind of synonymous with acting. It's like when you have an objective and something to do, you get out of your own way and you just do it. So I'm, I'm thinking like, it's dark. We turned around, now it's dark. And they're like, look at the monitor. And you're thinking like, wow. With the new technology, within the past like two months of us starting this project, the Alexas have been modified. We can shoot right at dark and they can brighten it up. At the end of the day, when our director, Ben Richardson, comes up to us and goes, I think that was the best looking thing I've ever shot. It's been a good day of work. It's just a very beautifully shot, complex story. A, a lot of struggle. What are you willing to risk in order to give your family a new life or a new, a new opportunity?